what up, what up, man? It's your boy Shot. Shot vs. A Body Podcast, episode goddamn 85. Got a special guest in the building, man. She a, a film director, a podcast host, uh, one half of the Call You Bad Podcast. We got, uh, should I call you Robin Niggas? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm okay with that. That's what everybody yeah, Robin else Niggas, because that's the only thing I'll be seeing. <laughs> you was on um, the Homies, the Twins Podcast, the Connected Experience. They, you know, call you Robin Niggas. Yeah, so they I, do. I guess they that's do. her name. <laughs> <laughs> so, when uh, they were talking about the. What was it? The Urban Podcast Summit? For sure. Like, when I introduced myself, that was, like, yeah. right before we started our podcast. Yeah. And that was, like, four years ago, I guess. So, how, how, like, how did that come about? Like, what was it? Robin Niggas. Like, of course, Robin Niggas. Like, that, what, what did that name? How did that name come and you just stick with it? Uh, I love Gucci Man. Yeah. And he said, if I wasn't rapping, then I'll be Robin. So, I just was <laughs> like, okay, I'm Robin Niggas. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. That's funny. Isn't it? Hey, real quick. We always start off, you know, differently, but... When you say Gucci Man, Robin Niggas and stuff, they had me. I've been asking people about uh, people playlists. Mm -hmm. Can a playlist be a red flag in a relationship? Hell yes. Oh no, I'm like a music <laughs> enthusiast, yeah. so like I don't know what else I'm supposed to go on. Like I need to know your movies and I need yeah. to know your music. They play a big role before we start off. Yeah, because first of all, I uh, now I got this thing where I ask niggas like, what do you listen to your music on? Because if you say YouTube, <laughs> that's a red flag for me immediately. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it is. It Cause is. Because what Nick, he can't afford the streaming platform. I need you to invest in yeah. it. Like, I listen to a lot of music yeah. all of the damn time. Like, sure. most of the time, I, like, open my eyes and press play. Yeah. So, I can't do that on YouTube. Like, yeah. I can't get shit done on my phone Man. and play music yeah, on YouTube. Sure. Yeah. Like, That's so, funny. that lets me know where you at yeah. with it. Because everybody who <laughs> listens to music from YouTube always be like, old heads. Like niggas don't know how I ne don't know how I navigate the phone. Cause yep. as soon as you said this shit, I thought about my father in law, and like that nigga just be listening to everything on YouTube, connecting that shit to the motherfucker car and shit. It sound distorted <laughs> as hell, or it's like it's like some shit at the beginning yeah, yep, before yep. it starts. So like, you can't really get into the album. Like damn, you gotta listen to this ad. Shit real not quick. in order. Like how am I supposed to listen to some shit out of order <laughs> for the first time? Like what the fuck? No, <laughs> but that lets me know immediately like who I'm fucking with. <laughs> yeah. So what you what you got? Apple, title, Spotify, Spotify. Oh yeah, yeah, I got. I, got, uh, I fucked title. with title for a little bit. Title is just not really user friendly. Yeah. Um, if they update they shit or like switch some shit around, maybe I'll go back for a yeah. little bit. I fuck with title. Um, I don't know. Maybe because it's a, uh, I get the family plan, so it's cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I don't gotta give my cousin five dollars <laughs> and shit. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of music, what's some shit you've been listening to that uh, as new? Uh, well, of course, uh, Certified Lover Boy. Everybody listening to that, of course, I am. Mm. Um, I, I listen to that shit on my way here. Yeah, I ain't, I wasn't rocking with it. Uh, I, it's a lover boy album. Yeah, I, it just wasn't what I thought it was gonna be. I well, mean, what was you expecting? This better, man. With Drake, it's like every song he make is the same. It's a remix. That's it. I agree. It's like the same kind of. Um, like concept that mm -hmm. he go like he hit you with some rap shit yeah. then he gonna sing to you a little bit then yeah. he gonna sing to you a lot of it yeah. and then he gonna like hit you with a good feature yeah. too yeah. like he's sticking to he's sticking to what yeah. worked for him yeah and that's cool like don't get me wrong that's cool the ladies love it that he gonna always have money always gonna sell but sometimes you wanna know about the person a little bit more than just you know what I'm saying than what they typically do yeah to what they typically do so it'd be the same shit man I been I, last album I listened to was the Common album that, which was cold to me Okay. Common just dropped the album on Sunday. What up, though? And, um, yeah, that was cold to me. Not Sunday. On fucking Friday. Yeah, but that Drake shit and that Yeezy, like, I don't know. Oh, no, I didn't listen to the Yeezy. I've been listening to um Comeback Season. Okay. Like, that's, like, I listen to that shit every fucking morning. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> um... The Baby Keem shit. Yeah, yeah. I've been listening I, to I've been his. hearing I about like him. him. Like, I heard him on uh, Kendrick, but I really ain't been, you know, saying hip to his music for real. I like it. Um, it surprised me at first because I didn't know he was like Kendrick family and shit until mm -hmm. he came out with Family Ties. I was like, yeah. oh shit, because yeah. I just like Spotify, you know, just throw shit on there for, for sure. You. Yeah. Um, what else? Uh, Mariah the Scientist. I love okay, her. I heard, shit. Her, I heard. I think uh, I heard uh, Joe Budden talk about that on his podcast. Yeah, I like um her most recent shit was like her first debut album. Mm -hmm. It yeah. was really good. I loved it. Now I asked that because it was like you you were saying it like based off of niggas who who listen to music on YouTube and shit. But I'm like niggas playlists like to me if a chick only listen to hood ratchet music, you kind of know about that chick. <laughs> like if she know every Gucci Man song from 08 and that's the only thing you get in the car. Like no, it's cool. But you just said you listen to different hey. things. <laughs> 
that's cool. But if, that's, if, that's, if that's the only thing, like uh, in my mind, you might be for the streets. If you ain't, if you can't tap into different shit and you just all ratchet, then I don't know if I can really mess with you. I don't know. I don't. I don't judge like that. Cause my my homegirl, she <laughs> listened to only like ratchet shit. She live out in uh, like Maryland, mm-hmm. and, but she from Detroit. Mm-hmm. She only listen to ratchet shit like straight hood music. And she's a nurse. Yeah. Like she be pulling, <laughs> whipping into the lot, like listening to Babyface Ray. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like she and when I uh, went to visit her, she was like, "You got to put me on some other shit." She was like, "Cause I listen to ratchet music. Yeah, all, the all time. day. Like, yeah. It's like we got. I want to be able to listen to some damn Babyface sometimes when we get in the yeah, car. But like, she like. Like, travels around the For world. Sure. She like in Africa right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, she, yeah, she, so she, she got is culture, but yeah. she just love rap music. Her shit. That's her shit. Well, I might be wrong. Then I might have to go ahead and you know get that. You shit gotta. Out my... That's why I like the movies with the music because yeah. like that lets me know. Yeah. Like that with that because it's not yeah. always mm-hmm. that way because like once you I feel like you just gotta know what to get to know about that person. For sure. For sure. And you said movies with the music. Remember how niggas used to buy soundtracks. Oh man! Like niggas don't buy soundtracks no more. Like I remember a Bullet Rim soundtrack was like one of the dopest ones. Uh, Boomerang had good ass soundtrack. Like niggas, niggas had some good soundtracks. Put, niggas don't put that much work into their music with the uh, with the films anymore. No, I feel no. like like when you bought a soundtrack, you bought it because the music hit you so hard while you was watching. You like shit. damn, yeah, yeah, that it made you like I need to listen to the shit For without sure. the uh, without the movie. Yeah. But like I love uh, Issa Rae and. Oh yeah, she be making some the good music shit. on yeah. Insecure is perfection. I listen to the playlist still. Hell yeah, it's amazing. Hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah, for sure. That's a fact. That's a fact. Now, usually we start off before we get into you. We got a thing called Salute Me While I'm Here. You know, what I'm saying a lot of times we wait to give people their flowers when they pass away instead of you know, what I'm saying doing it while they can still smell their flowers. But it can't be nobody close to you. No mom, no dad, no siblings, no kids. You know, what I'm saying so. You got anybody in mind that you can think of off 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 top? Um. Okay. The proper well, her name on. Um, line is the proper aesthetic but okay. um she's a creative director okay she works with um like house of size she has her own hat line she has trucker hats and bucket hats they're satin like the bucket hats are so roomy even when i had all my hair yeah, like yeah, i could yeah. fit them over uh great person like whenever i see her out super mm. cool like just hard working so sure. her um the proper aesthetic dot live, I think, okay. is where you can get the hats. And it's all about hats, different hats, buckets. You you said truck hats, all that junk. Yeah, and she does creative direction. Okay, okay, yeah. that's what's up. I ain't got nobody, and I'm not gonna try. I've been <laughs> it's episode eighty five, and I've been <laughs> I've been just squeezing niggas out like <laughs> like Craig from down the street, like you know, saying hey, just everybody, you know, saying keep doing y'all, keep living, keep being positive and shit. That's my that's my salute, niggas is being positive. So I'm gonna try something new. I usually don't start like this, but I'm going to do this segment called Random. I okay. go on your page, and I find random, three random things. It could be a person. It could be a place. It could be a thing, whatever. And you tell me what, what this what this thing is to you or how, how what it means to you and stuff. Because it's one person I found on your page that was like a common theme. So the first person I'm going to name is Michael B. Jordan. Okay, really? Like, <laughs> That's a common thing on my page. Yeah, on, on your earlier, on your earlier, on your earlier uh, Instagram page. So yeah. So uh-huh. when, when did you fall in love with him? Um, Hardball. Hardball. Oh, damn, that was a throwback. Hardball. That's a throwback. That's a I, super throwback. Yeah. Um, I watched a lot of um, what was it? Ridiculousness. Yeah. So I always kept with, like kept up with Stilo. Yeah, and, that's his homeboy. Right? Yeah, yeah, and Michael B. Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cause I do earlier Instagram posts. You you was like Michael B. Jordan on there. So. Okay, yeah, I'm not a, I'm not like against that. Yeah, yeah, that's, for sure. That's, All right, that's now, the second thing I peep <laughs> that you had life for it. I'm like, damn, that's a throwback I ain't had in a while. Algo sir. Oh my gosh, I love Alga Syrup so much. Yeah. We used to get it at Save a Lot. That's the only place I know that's still selling. Uh, I think Kroger's do too. <laughs> do they? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. But those, you can't make no punk ass pancakes with those. Those gotta be some strong pancakes. Yeah, they gotta be crispy. That's <laughs> yeah. what, my cousin like taught me how to make crispy pancakes so that I can use Alga Syrup. Because they fluffy. Oh, them bitches man, breaking. Man. That motherfucker turning to soup. It's brittle. Like, like you gotta be, the, it's a sp- like it just it will turn into nothing. It your, will be eating your pancakes gotta be built for for, for tough for the motherfucking for that syrup. Like that shit, that's my mom used to buy that syrup all the time. Like that was the only syrup. Like when I went to somebody else and bought like some some Miss Butterworth, like damn this shit thin as hell. Right. That alga though. That shit thick. My family low key um, country as hell. So yeah. we, my grandma had, I always country. had yeah. Alka syrup. Yep, that makes sense. That makes sense. All right, last one is Rick and Morty. 
Oh, I love Ricky and Morty, man, so much. Yeah. So much. That's, your, that's like one of your top cartoons? It is. Like, the way Rick, like, explains his intelligence consistently, especially my fav- one of my favorite memes is, like, um, I don't care uh, about you booing me. I seen what makes you cheer. Yeah. Like. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell, yeah. So, yeah, that's the thing. I, those are those three things I noticed. And, like I said, that August syrup stood out because I'm like, don't nobody, especially a female, talk about that syrup. I love like, that that's, syrup. That's, that, that's some good shit. I might have to go ahead and, and get that syrup. I'll probably be the only nigga in the house eating pancakes that day. Because I know my wife going to be like, get this shit out of here. My, uh, my friend, she like to uh, put it with, like, the drop biscuits. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. <clears throat> damn. That shit, oh shit, that probably yes. Hell yeah. Yes. Hell yeah, with some salmon and that motherfucking rice. Whoo. Salmon coquette, damn. Yes, I'm going to have to get through that shit tonight. Shit. Oh my God. Fuck around playing. Now, uh, let's t- talk about you growing up. Like, who was in the household? Were you from east or west? Like, how was it growing up as a uh, as a young Robin, Robin, uh, Robin kids? You, you wasn't Robin niggas then. <laughs> I was a uh, young Robin Dion, I yeah. guess. Um, but... My parents split when I was young, so my dad lived on the west and my mom lived on the east. All right. Uh, but I had hella family with my yeah. mama. Like, my grandma had all my cousins over there. I got seven aunties. I got 21st cousins. Mm-hmm. I had second cousins at a young age, so it's like a bunch of us. So I was always over there with the kids. And sure. I went to my auntie on my dad's side, uh, his best friend. Okay. She was the principal at Malcolm X. Okay, all right. So, um, and I spent time over there as a kid. I grew up, um, <clears throat> excuse me, playing chess mm. at the DIA. Yeah. Um, but I would just like leave the chess and just walk around yeah. the DIA. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my mama used to take us to like art gallery openings. Okay. And shit. Um, that's why I love cheese and crackers now. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I also do love art. Yeah. Um. I grew up playing like instruments and shit, but not like mm. committing to anything. Okay. So while uh, you was in band or whatever? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I played like violin as a kid, kid. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so you did a lot yeah, like <laughs> my mama had us in well, like culture. <laughs> <laughs> my mama had us in everything and my dad was a English teacher at Denby. Okay. So, um I read Romeo and Juliet early yeah. because that's what you had to read exactly. as a freshman. Yeah. So it was, um, was on there before you even got there. Yeah, I love to read growing up. That's the thing about me. Like to this day, I usually always have a book yeah, with me. Like sure. I had one job, and they was like, "What the fuck are you reading?" Because it the you know, Stephen King and I was big as hell, mm. and um, they was like, "Is this a dictionary?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah, shit, goddamn. <laughs> but um, I love to read. I mm. love like stories, and that's why I love movies too. I For grew sure. up like always loving movies. Like one of my favorite movies growing up was Drop Dead Fred. Okay, okay. Which I don't know if y'all seen that before. It's yeah. kind of it's a, about a girl and her imaginary friend. Okay. Um, so I always loved like offbeat shit. To this day, like I still love crazy ass movies. Yeah, like yeah. I watched this movie the other day. It's called The Voyeurs. The Voyeurs? Yes. Okay. It's on uh Amazon. It's about these people who um end up like kind of stalking they uh yeah. neighbors yeah. they see them through the uh, apartment window across the way okay so it's a crazy ass story but i was not able to predict that one really good. so is your movie selection like how your um your uh your music is is you just press play uh yeah pretty much yeah. one of my favorite movies is um raising in the sun mm-hmm. the sydney portier oh so, yeah 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 yeah. Um, yeah i just have like different Kind of taste. So. Give me your uh, give me your top five go to movies. All right, <clears throat> I like this because my list be all over the place. <laughs> so like I said, Raising in the Sun. Okay. Um, Big Daddy, Adam Sandler. Oh shit, that was a dope movie. <laughs> That's the last movie I saw before he closed Eastland Movie Theater. Yes, I love that movie. Um, Boys in the Hood. Okay. Uh, Mystery. Imitation to Life. All right. And Beaches. Okay, okay, okay. Mine's is a uh, Star Shape Redemption. Uh, Bronze Tales, Friday, Menace. I'll do Menace slash Boys in the Hood. And that fifth one. Damn. Damn, what's that fifth one? Juice. Probably juice. But Straw Shape Redemption and Bronze Tales. I remember watching that junk as a, as a little homie. Like, and those, those, those are my shit. Like, especially Straw Shape Redemption. Like, seeing that nigga escape the jail. Like, Going through a football tunnel for the shit. He said, well, he went through 300 yards worth of, worth of sewage and shit. Like, just to get out that motherfucker. And then you see niggas who got out and was in jail for so long that they couldn't even, you know what I'm saying, adapt. And my man, white dude, killed himself or whatever. Like, 
You seen Shawshank Redemption? Uh, yeah, I have. Yeah, that's, have. Like, that's my shit. One. Yeah, like it's I can watch really that jump to this day. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna take my fifth one before it's gone. Okay, so uh, Juice is usually Ju- my yeah, honorable mention. Out. Yeah, it's like one of my favorite movies. Um, like I just hate it's that one Tupac of my was a whole ass nigga in that movie. Yeah, it's one of my like, favorite <laughs> movies to just like like layer and pull back yeah. because like it's so much shit to it. Because yeah. we was actually talking about that the last time I was here because I was saying like um, Bishop wasn't the leader of the group like nah, Raheem, Raheem was. was yeah and he was he was the nigga that brought the gun yeah for sure yeah so but he got shot by the uh, the same thing that he brought to yep. protect them exactly or to take them to what he was saying was the yeah. next level yeah but then you gotta look at Bishop where he came from his household yeah and that play like I said that play a part in you know your, your come up how you gonna you know most of the time your household gonna play gonna play a role in how you grow up and stuff and how you, yes. what you gonna become and you know saying Tupac dad you see he was out there I think he was in the military or something like that like mm-hmm. he would tell he was just in that room and just stuck you know what I'm saying he came from a fucked up situation like do you believe that like a lot of times your household can play a role in how you grew up I think it plays the role yeah. I think the because that's the only thing that you know For is sure. your household so everything that you learn in life is taught to you at home mm-hmm. first yep, yep. and so that's when we take it out to into the world and we realize like whether it was good or bad and how yeah. it benefits you yeah. and I think in life we get to a certain age where you have to slowly unlearn all the shit that you learned at home. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that my parents were amazing. Yeah. I think they have a lot of flaws too. For sure. For sure. And I have to unlearn their flaws. Yeah. And me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I gotta be better. So you said they had divorce uh, like you was you was young. How old were yeah, you? Yeah, I was five. Okay, okay. So do you think like that play a um a role? Did your mom ever remarry or your dad ever remarry? My dad remarried. He okay. remarried like a few years later. My mama never remarried. Okay. I think it definitely played. Yeah, because you can look at that and maybe sometimes that can steer you away from the whole commitment thing once you get older. Uh and, and I don't sometimes. Well, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, that's probably my problem. Yeah, because sometimes you'd be like, you know what I'm saying? Because you, 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 you said, you're, you know, five years old, so, so you really never really seen your mom and dad together. No, not really. Yeah, yeah. But everybody else's parents stayed together. Okay. Like, um, like I said, my auntie was the uh, the principal over at Malcolm X. Like her and my uncle are still married to this day. Okay. They've been married for I think fifty years now. <laughs> oh, um, that's, that's what's up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they got married in their twenties. My uncle was like in his late seventies. So. Okay. Okay. Um, they got they have five kids together. They have a bunch of grandkids. Yeah. Um, they still live in the same house my entire life. Yeah. Um, my auntie and my uncle like her first husband like didn't work out like he came in played step parent yeah. like he was dropping me off at school with yeah, my cousins yeah, yeah. and shit like my auntie and my uncle they still married to this day like um a lot of the people around me stay together um my, one of my parent one of my auntie and my uncles so like i said i got seven aunts um they've been together since they were like 13 years old okay. he had a baby on her but they still together and rocked it out through that he got a, yeah he got into a, a car accident and um like developed epilepsy and she okay. became the breadwinner of yeah. the household and to this day mm-hmm. so i mean i've seen a lot of couples make it through a lot yeah. of different shit would, would you like like by seeing people together couples and stuff like that would you kind of like upset like damn why my mom and dad didn't last nah oh you, you yeah nah i knew it was like yeah like this is probably the best thing right. for, it to, for it to be this way yeah i've seen these niggas like argue over albums i was yeah. like this <laughs> You know, you know, relationship by the end when you just argue about the dumbest shit. Like, motherfucker, you 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 slept that way. Like, niggas will start sleeping. <laughs> niggas will start making any type of argument. Like, dog, I just hate the way this person breathes. But that's how big of a deal music was to my parents. Yeah. Though, like, like you not gonna walk away yeah, with sure. my damn album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, no, I put I pay for that. Speaking of, um, we we talk about a lot of music on this show. Um, usually, you get your musical influences from your parents. And you said they argue about albums. Who was some artists that you was liking just based off your mom and dad, like before you got your own ear for music? Oh, like everything old, like yeah. uh, Motown. So uh, Diana Ross was my mama loved disco. I love disco mm-hmm. too. Um, so Diana Ross, like Donna Summers. Um, Marvin Gaye was like my dad's favorite. Aretha Franklin, my mama is a huge fan. Oh, yeah. Um, my grandma listened to like Ray Charles. Okay. And Etta James was her absolute favorite. Um, so I grew up with like a lot of different stuff. For sure. Yeah. Uh, like the 
My mama loved um, like the Beatles mm -hmm. oh, yeah. and shit. Like she listened to, to a little bit of everything. Yeah, bro. yeah, the Beatles. Goddamn, he was listening to Sting. Goddamn, everybody. Rod Stewart. What's my man name? Who was uh, bam? It was this one dude. It was a gay dude, white dude. Uh, George Michael. Oh yeah. Yeah, like it was so. And my dad was the biggest racist ever. <laughs> but listen to whoever, whatever. Any anything he listened to it. Like, yeah. He I guess he wasn't racist towards music, but he just hated white people in general. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when it came to music though, it was everything was being played in the crib. Bob Marley, like, but he never really listened to rap for real. Okay. Like the only rap that was being played in my crib was a uh, Tupac. That's it. I think a lot of older people saw rap or hip hop as like this kind of negative light mm -hmm. that was that black people were shining on themselves. For sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I don't remember him listening to like no NWA, none of that shit. Like I had to go back and listen to that shit because I was listening to like childish rap, uh, MC Hammer, goddamn <laughs> Ken Play, uh, Criss Cross. Like that was my rap music. That's the only thing I could listen to. Then when I got older, I had to go back and listen to like you know old Jay Z, old Nas, shit like that. The shit that I really got was like from my brother and my sister. I used to steal they out, they CDs and listen For to sure. them. My brother um loved Nas, he oh, loved yeah, Jay Z. Yeah. Like my brother had um, what was it? Uh, he had Illmatic on CD. He had yeah. A Ball and MJG. Oh yeah, throwback. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, my he brother. my brother listened to like pretty much everything i yeah. remember like he uh stole my gwen stefani cd yeah. one time yeah, yeah, yeah. uh my sister listened to the rough rider she was a huge oh, eve shit, fan yeah. he was cold though as hell yeah. as hell she uh was... dm my auntie was a huge dmx fan yeah. oh my gosh yeah, damn, like, that's the peak DMX, I, slipping is like one of my that's my favorite top, my top five songs song. yeah slipping yeah. is my top five that song. shit's like perfect yeah hell yeah that's my top five song for sure so uh once you once you got your own ear for music who was people that you listen to based off just you? Not your mom, not your dad, not your brothers. Like the first, the first like piece of music I remember like really choosing. Mm. I was eight, mm. and it was the Blueprint. Okay, that, that that's my favorite Jay Z album. Me too. Yeah, me and him argue all the time because he said the first one, of course, is the best one. It might be, but my favorite one is the Blueprint one. Me too. I um I think Heart of the City is like. That's when I fell in love with Kanye and I didn't even know. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like, the production on there is just... And the way Jay-Z, like, yeah. uh, like come on the track, like, I, it's a... The blueprint is it. Yeah, like, I got it on vinyl. Yeah, I, it's still in the plastic. Yeah, oh, shit. I remember hearing song cry, like, damn. This shit hard. Like, that whole album was hard as hell. Yeah. For, that was a, and it was only like 10, 11 songs on there. Yeah, that's the one with um, Hova. Hova. Yeah, uh, hell yeah. Uh, that was my <laughs> shit. That's the little bop he got on there. Hell yeah, that motherfucker was hard. <laughs> now, uh, stay on music a little bit more. Uh, give me an album or a song every time you hear it, it take you back to a time. It could be the first time you gave Craig a hug, this song was playing. Like, uh. <laughs> first time you got in trouble, like this song was playing. Like, it's just every time you hear this song or this album, it take you right back to that exact time in your life. Ooh, that's a hard one because there's so many. Yeah. Um, what's, what's one that just stands out then? Mm, I'm going to say. Uh, ooh. Oh, Friday Night Lights. Okay. Okay. What, what was you What was you at that time? Let's paint that paint a good picture. Sophomore year in college. All right. I had um <laughs> I had upped the bag on my student loan so I could stay in a single dorm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like in this. I was in a double dorm, so it was for two people, and I was in that bitch by myself. Yeah. Um and <laughs> <laughs> and um. I had just like got a MacBook and shit. Like I was living the college dream at MSU. For sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And Friday Night Lights dropped, and I remember hearing the Erica Badu sample. Okay. And I was like, damn. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And every time I hear Friday Night Lights, I'm like sitting at that desk. Yeah. With the laptop, yeah. like listening to it for the first in your, time. In your two person <laughs> <laughs> in my <laughs> big ass dorm. <laughs> hell yeah, hell yeah. Now before you know, saying you went to college or whatever, you was in high school. Tell me, uh, what school you went to? How was you as a high school student? Like, what uh, was you still into uh, into the band then, or was that something that was over with? No, by then, um, I was over with the mu. I mean, with the uh, playing music, okay. I started to do dance. Okay. In eighth grade, so I started all out, started off doing hip hop, and then mm -hmm. I started doing um, like praise dance and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And my so my sophomore year of high school, I auditioned for our like theater dance. Okay. Which nobody really took seriously, so yeah. I didn't do anything. And then my uh, and I was dancing like somewhere else doing modern dance. I had started doing that. Yeah. Um, I took ballet, like my freshman year of high school. See, I was just telling niggas on the last episode. 
my little thing I wanted to do that I didn't tell nobody, but my mom never put me in. It was tap dance class. Tap, I think tap dancing is shit. like it's becoming a lost <laughs> art, and yeah, it's so amazing. Because it was this dude named Gregory Hans. Oh yes, on the movie Tap. Yeah, and I'm like, dog, I need to do that shit. And what's my man with the dress, uh, Savion? Yes, I'm like, dog, I need to be, I need to be a next tap dancer. Like I used to have my church shoes going to bed in the kitchen and be tapping away with, <laughs> like, I'm like, dog, mom, you gotta put me in this motherfucking tap tap dance class. She uh, never did. <laughs> she never did. Like, I would be cold at that shit. I, I danced everywhere. Like, like I said, I started off with like hip hop in the eighth grade, and then I did like ballet for a little bit. And once I did ballet, I was like, okay, I need to like yeah. do more. And I um started like trying to do modern and. Like I said, it didn't work out in 10th grade. And then, like, my last two years of high school, I went to Southeastern. I think I said that. All four? No. Um, my freshman year, I went to Cass. Okay, okay, okay. What happened? Like, we got into trouble? I left. Or? No, okay. no, no. I left. It just wasn't, like, yeah. the place for me socially. Saying, I went to uh, Southeastern with my last two years. I got kicked out of Gross Point North because they found out I moved back to the city. Damn, that's yeah. fucked up. <laughs> I wanted to go to King, but they had like a waiting list. So I'm like, man, fuck, I go. They to like Southeast. punish kids for wanting What's, a good education. So, uh, so weird. I know I graduated in '04. What year are you? I graduated in '09. Okay, so did you have a uh, Miss Roddy? Wait, wait, you graduated from Southeastern in '04. Yeah, that's before we went to the new building. Yeah, no, my sister uh, graduated in '05. Okay, what was her name? Wendy. Oh, yeah. Wendy, Wendy. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Uh, so was Miss Roddy still? Uh, the oh yeah, teacher? for sure. For that sure. Was my, that was my dog. She she was our English teacher. She saved my life, like, cause I was skipping every class, and yeah, she was the one person that you know saying I was going to her class. I did my final. It was a crazy final. I remember you had to do like a twenty-five minute presentation or something like that. Mm -hmm. I forgot how exactly oh, yeah. I was. Yeah. So I did. Like she passed me, and then the one teacher I hated. She tried to hold me back, even though I kind of fucked myself up. I was skipping her class every day. Miss, uh, fuck the African American history teacher, light skin Miss, whatever her name was. Yeah, no, I, I kept, I barely remember. Yeah, 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 but a lot of people say that about Miss Roddy. Miss Roddy was cool. Um, I got a little story about Miss Roddy, but I'm gonna let it go. <laughs> oh, uh, but oh, she, I, I think that she inspired <laughs> a lot of people. It was like a 15 page paper with yeah. a 25 minute yep, presentation, yep, 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 yep. Um, and you had to do it with like a no. group of four people. Yeah, we got, um, we got which no, that's not yeah. bad. That's only four or five pages a person, and like she uh, walked you through the process and made sure that you had a, a, a topic that was worth that many pages. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. But yeah, it was a yeah. it was a great experience in high school to have like that type of responsibility. And writing a paper mm -hmm. um, That was like The best thing I did in college I couldn't take Test work to damn But I yeah. wrote the fuck Out of the papers <laughs> Hell yeah <laughs> Like really I got like Aced every paper And like failed All my <laughs> All my exams <laughs> Yeah yeah God damn <laughs> But um Oh yeah So I was dancing In high school Okay and like I uh I love to dance Like we Got a new instructor My My Junior year mm -hmm. Um Her name is Miss Rimmer Okay She was like teaching over at uh i think it was osborne and then she came over to us and that was like the best two years of my high school experience okay she um like took us to new york um mm -hmm. she took us to see alvin ailey like she's the reason why i still go see alvin ailey to okay. this day um that's why i'm mad they're not touring right now yeah. um but she like took us to new york so i actually took a dance class at alvin ailey dance mm -hmm. theater mm -hmm. um like with one of the last living members of katherine dunham's mm -hmm. dance theater yeah. um uh, yeah like she gave us i mean she gave me like amazing mm -hmm. life altering experiences like she was like one of the reasons why i became like disciplined yeah. and wanted to like really put put effort towards certain things yeah. like she was she really changed things for me and like growing up it seemed like like yo was that your mom like was that like something she intended on doing is having you do like different things try different things because you said you in chess dance band like you you did a lot of things like was that something that was intentional like to make sure you got something to do you're not just in the house because a lot of times parents nowadays got kids and the kid just in the crib because for the most part the parents don't have a lot of time to do anything with them because they're at work yeah. So you think that was something intentionally that your mom did just to keep you from, you know, saying going in the wrong direction, make sure you're busy, make sure you're learning different things and just, you know, saying being in the crib on the block? Yes. Um, my mama was very adamant about me trying shit. Like, yeah. first of all, she was like, you're not, you like it, you you not just going to. You're not just gonna sit up in my house, yeah. and I got that exact speech when she wanted me to play um, academic games. Oh my god! And I was like, I do not want to do that oh shit. God. She was like, you, you, you gonna try it? And I had to like go to the tournaments and all that shit. Was the worst. No, I, my academic game experience was terrible. 
I got my ass kicked so bad I cried. I went to the bathroom and started crying. Dog. I was bad at it. Bad. Man, academic games. I'm but- like, these niggas is wet. I'm like, I could do math fast, but damn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'm like, these niggas is calculators. Man, like, for real. It had me from like, like, what a the dumbass. Yeah, like, I was like, I need to go back to the regular class. Yeah. This not, no. For sure. But no, that's a good thing. Like, cause then when you get older, like you just, it's more about you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And you, uh, I, I get to the point where I'm like, well, I just want to try stuff. Yeah. Like, I, even if I don't like it in the end, yeah. like, at least I tried it. I know that I don't. Yeah, like and once it. you get older, you're not afraid. A lot of yeah. times you get older, you've been so stuck in one way, one mode, that you don't want to break out of that shit. Yeah, and that's definitely a thing for me. Like, that, and that's how I ended up um, writing a script for this film because after I lost, because I stayed doing like personal essays and like just little mm. journals and stuff to myself, yeah. a lot of stuff to myself, um, even though I like blogged and. Mm. I um, did like a hip hop blog for um, like girls who love hip hop and mm. told them like what music means to me and that kind of stuff. I that, had that, never written stories. Is that something you? Cause we gonna get to that, the movie part, but that's something you still do with the blog as far as like, or that's something you start? No, I stopped doing it. Um, mm. But I am open to blogging again. Yeah, I yeah, need yeah. To Cause that sounds like a dope it. little concept. Tomorrow you said girls that love hip hop. Yeah, I don't think they um, like they probably you know turned it into something mm. else or you yeah. know repurposed it. But um, yeah. at the time it was yeah, girls okay. love hip hop. Now, uh, now to jump forward, you uh, you you went to Michigan State. Yes. Was that was that always the first choice? And do you ever look back now and be like, damn, maybe I should have took a different route in school or you know you, or you want to do anything different uh no i wouldn't do nothing different my yeah. first choice was fam you okay i had got accepted i like paid my housing and everything like me and my mama had a plan mm-hmm. how to drive me down and <clears throat> the problem was i wasn't receiving enough like student aid from them uh okay. like financial aid and shit yeah. and michigan state was like well if you come here like we'll give you all this money yeah. and i was like Okay. Yeah, I mean, sure. yeah. honestly, I college was like something that I knew I had to do. So I was like, well, I mean, if y'all niggas gonna give me a couple dollars, yeah, like, yeah, I, I, I guess, <laughs> yeah, sure, for sure. Yeah. And I get, and I wasn't that far away from home, so yeah. I had a chance to be away from home while mm-hmm. not being like too far. Yeah. Um. So yeah, and it was like a little bit of a shell shock. I went in blind with my roommate. Mm-hmm. Um. So I got roomed with like this white girl from Petoskey, Michigan. Yeah. <laughs> Goddamn! Yeah, was like she, the only other black people she had seen was like this, like one black family in her town. Yeah, just the one. Yeah, that, that black family probably was scared of them for sure. Yeah, I'm sure they were. Yeah. I'm sure, they, and now, they were like fucking crazy. Now, was you uh, a little uh, shocked, like by seeing so many white people? Because you come from Southeastern, you come from the, you know, saying the hood, inner city of Detroit, and then you go to Michigan State, where it's like a motherfucking different cultures racist most but you know less black people probably uh a little bit but not really mm-hmm. so <laughs> not that you say like mama put me in every fucking thing i yes. did like this program every summer <laughs> it was like a week where we like went to the zoo and you like you spent a week at the zoo yeah for sure and it was like kids from all over the uh all over the city mm-hmm. that got bust there yeah. and we would like spend a week together so yeah. i had always spent a little time with white kids and mm-hmm. my auntie mm-hmm. she like lived in the burb she lived uh in canada growing up okay. so uh, my cousin she always had white friends growing yeah. Yeah. So I knew a little bit about white people. Yeah, so you wasn't coming here like, damn, I never seen white people like this. Yeah, before. <laughs> no, but it, I was like, these some different yeah. white people, yeah, like yeah. Yeah. these the crackers, yeah, like these sure. the others. Yeah, because whenever I think about <laughs> mi- white people, in Michigan State, I just think about racism. Yeah, for some reason, I always think white fans of Michigan State is racist, and the white fans of Michigan is like the hip. They more to to the, like I don't know for some reason I always feel that way. Every white person that cheered for Michigan State that I know seemed like a total racist dog. Uh, I never. Well, I, <laughs> and that's that's crazy. But I swear to God, then when you see a white person that cheered for Michigan, they always seem like hip, more in tune to you know what I'm saying. I feel like because the people, life. Mm, I don't know about that. I, I, could, be, I, could, be, I could be wrong, but I, it's just, my encounters been like. I feel a type of way about the athletic, the college athletic thing anyway. So. Mm. Cause this shit always seemed like slavery to me. Cause oh, sure. all the players always black. Like yeah, and the only reason why now they're trying to go ahead and give players a chance to make money off their likeness is because they see that people are leaving and going to you know saying oh like in basketball wise they're going to overseas and they doing other things to make money. So to save their their asses, they like fuck it. We'll go ahead and y'all can make money off y'all likeness now. Yeah, we gonna they see st- how them contracts work out. But though. they still fucking raping them at the end of the day, regardless. Yeah, oh so- thoroughly. <laughs> Thoroughly, yeah. and I stayed. Um, I stayed in a dorm with 
basketball with the football players. Yeah. And uh, cause I, the door of my stadium was like right across from uh, the stadium. Okay. But uh, and they were like all really nice guys and shit. But you see, they like regular ass college students fucking yeah, struggling just like exactly. the rest of us eating the same bullshit we eating. Yep. But these niggas got to go on the field and like work extra hard and do all this other yeah. shit to make sure that they succeed. Yeah, you practicing twice a day, still keeping up with your academics and stuff, like yeah. And it was like one guy on our floor, he was like excelling academically mm. so he was like you know putting a lot of effort towards his academics and still was like doing really well on the field so it's like this nigga really like is giving his all and is fucking broke bro like yeah, sure. that's, that's crazy and they be wondering why niggas taking money like though i'm out here struggling at the end of the day making you all this money and i ain't got a dime With millions of dollars my number on the jersey my name in it but you know it's me and you making money off that shit that's some fucked up shit that's why they was talking about this shit with the fair five like niggas was getting rich off of them and they didn't see shit. Like, that shit was some bullshit. So, you go to Michigan State, but then being accepted to FAMU at first, did you look at it like, damn, I'm, I wish I was with my peoples? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, do you ever think about, like, how that could have been life changing going to FAMU in opposed to going to Michigan State? Uh, no. I, I don't think about life like that. Um, oh, sure. I think about life like I'm where I'm supposed to be because I'm supposed yeah, to be there. So you ain't the type of person that like live with regrets. It's shit nah. supposed to happen. It, it just happened. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I might feel bad about some shit that happened, mm-hmm. but you know, eventually you got to let it go because the shit already happened. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think a lot of niggas be fucking their own self up by living in the past or living with something that they like. Damn, I should have did this. And yeah. Just moving the fuck on, letting that shit go. Yeah, that's the thing. Like that, I've learned in life. Like. It, you hurting your damn self by yeah. holding on to some shit because I'm sitting here having this whole conversation with my motherfucking self. Like, you ain't nowhere to be found. <laughs> yeah, <for sure. laughs> hell yeah, hell yeah. Now, you didn't finish school. No. So, uh, what was the decision with that? And like, it was I, not my decision. <laughs> oh, 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 it was, uh, you fucking up in school? That's yeah, they was like, get the fuck out. Yeah. I told you, I was like, it's oh, yeah, all my yeah, papers. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, failing yeah. all my exams. So, like, niggas was not making it. Now, was you like uh, afraid of what your, uh, what your, what your mom or your pops would think? You come back to the crib and you went to Michigan State or they, or, you know, or they wasn't the ones to be like, damn, you fucked up or making you, you know what I'm saying? No, they better. wasn't the ones to make me feel bad because they knew that I had tried. Mm-hmm. And, um, I'm, and it's not like I came home and like just didn't do shit. I came yeah. home and was like, okay, I'm gonna find a job. Like I'm gonna yeah, make, sure sure. make sure that I'm trying to make the most of my time. And I've always like tried to find a nine to five and do something creatively. Yeah, so when yeah. I like came back from school, I that's when I started like trying to do the blog shit. Okay, okay, okay. Now, did you ever, do you ever um, feel? Do you feel like for certain people, depending on your path in life, college is a waste of time? Yes. Like, is it, I paid is it, fifty thousand yeah. dollars to find myself. <laughs> Like, <laughs> that's the most expensive self learning journey ever. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, for sure. Hell yeah. I could have did that shit and work. And, like, we, yeah, and we had talked about it. A lot of motherfuckers go to college, get a degree, but mm, that shit just collecting dust. Yeah, I think it really just depends on what you want to do in life. Like, I feel feel like when growing up i was always told like okay you're gonna be a doctor a lawyer or a teacher like you gotta mm. pick one and i was like okay i'll, I'll be a lawyer like yeah. i always wanted to do something creative creatively mm. but i felt like that was like never really nurtured yeah like until i was able to dance and that mm. was like the best expression to me mm. for me at the time too yeah for sure for sure so so uh do you look at it like like do you ever look back like damn i should go back to school but from what you said hell no sometimes <laughs> i sometimes i have considered it um, a yeah. time or two like i actually looked up classes um like journalism courses yeah, and shit for sure um because i do i just want to be a good writer yeah. i want to be a great writer you want to go for um, something that you actually going to be you know saying using and getting better off of exactly yeah. um but the thought of going to school for four years yeah. for journalism when i could possibly like work with somebody yeah. and like take seminar courses sure, and so like good. work as a PA on set and just learn from different scripts yeah. and shit and get that life experience that's so much more important to For me sure. than sitting in a fucking classroom with a yeah. person who couldn't quite make it yeah. in what they wanted to do so it's they decided teaching. to teach people yeah. like Damn. honestly like them not Am the I- Am I that person with culture? <laughs> I couldn't make it. I mean, but we we do need those people. No, no, for sure, for sure. But at the same time, when you really get down to it, the motherfuckers that's really gonna teach you are the people that it's are doing it. Life, yeah, living that yeah. life, yeah, doing it right now. Yeah, that do make sense to go ahead and give us somebody who's doing this shit who could teach you in the post of paying all this money sitting in the classroom. You don't want to be there. Yeah, some of the best coaches that we've seen used to play, yeah. and then they turned over the coach. For sure, for sure. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Now, let's switch it. Four years ago. 
yesterday is when y'all first did the Call You Back podcast. Yes. 2017. Yes. Y'all did it. Uh, you and your, uh, please say your co host name Kayla. The yeah. real K Simone. K Simone, yeah. Y'all did y'all jump four years ago. And also, y'all had uh, y'all first guest. Which was my dog Stats Who was on the show Yes yes So like Going back Like how do you feel It's been four years Do it seem like it's been four years And do you ever go back And listen to those earlier shows Like Damn this sound terrible In comparison <laughs> to like now Um <laughs> Well Okay what was your first question <laughs> Oh um Damn what was my first question <laughs> uh, Oh yeah uh, how, did, 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 did those four years Like flop by As far as yes. like Starting the podcast Yeah so my cousin Called me yesterday I was like hey I just want to wish Her anniversary You know yeah. And I was like what are you talking about, bro? And he was like, "The uh, your podcast anniversary." I was like, "Oh my god!" Because like we, I always forget it just flies past us, and we like, "Damn, it has been like was another was year." On a, on a date that nine eleven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's harder to forget that. Day. I'm, I'm gonna let that go. Uh, but yeah, so it's it's been amazing to like do this and build our friendship mm -hmm. and like learn as much as possible and like see a different side of Detroit doing the podcast shit mm -hmm. and like you know getting to know all the podcast people and shit it's been an amazing experience For honestly sure. I love it nah oh now that, this your home girl so how long y'all been yes. knowing each other before okay y'all did the podcast so I've known Kayla since we were 14 mm -hmm. and uh, we were like in this big group of friends or whatever mm -hmm. and eventually our friendships all dismantled and for stuff sure, for sure. um and me and kayla fell out of touch for three years okay and um after one of her grandparents passed i like reached out and because they like live next door or whatever mm -hmm. and i was just wanted to make sure she was cool mm -hmm. and i wanted to pay my respects and I just stopped by the house mm -hmm. and we just spent hours like reminiscing and shit. Okay. And then we was like, okay, we'll see like yeah. where we go from here. Okay. And eventually we ended up building our friendship to what it is now. Now did the podcast really start from just y'all having these long ass conversations? Yes. We have always, like ever since we've been like the first time me and her talked on the phone, we probably talked for like two and a half hours. Damn. We <laughs> just talking y'all ass off. <laughs> All the time. I'm, the other day I looked at, I looked down at the phone. We have been on the phone for three hours. Yeah. Like she yeah. got in the shower she got out the shower like <laughs> <laughs> good conversations hell yeah so like so what 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 was the point that y'all was like you know what man fuck it we need to record these conversations like would y'all like hearing other podcasts and like is this something we could do or like how was it so we both separately had ideas for podcasts okay so i was like trying to start i was trying to like work through my shit mm -hmm. and she was working through hers and then when we decided to be friends again mm -hmm. and one of our conversations that came up yeah. and kayla um went to specs howard okay she interned at WJLB mm. or um yeah I think it was WJLB okay. um but she has interned at a radio station she had her own uh online show mm. uh through internet radio so she you know had already had that experience and I'm I'm a writer yeah and I was just like well I just I want to talk some shit though yeah, yeah, for sure. yeah, 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 <laughs> and I was yeah, just yeah. trying to figure out um the best way for me to like get my point across okay um and w when we were having one of our conversations mm. She talked about a podcast, and I was like, oh, I kind of want to yeah, do a yeah. podcast. Yeah. And I was telling her, like, what my ideas were and everything. But, and she had a bunch of ideas. When we sat down to do our podcast, like, mm -hmm. it came out, like, one of our conversations. For sure, for sure. Now, is it hard, like, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm doing my podcast by myself, you know, besides having my producer in the back. You know, I ask some questions. But is it hard, like, when it's two people, and maybe you're not agreeing with what the other person want to talk about or stuff like that, like, prepping for a show, or y'all just go and just freestyle the shit? Uh, we pretty much freestyle like we've like gone tit for tat on our show like mm -hmm. had a little argument and shit yeah. <laughs> um, like a couple times yeah. um, because that's what we do sometimes we disagree like yeah. the one thing I always tell people is that um, you can't like not argue with a motherfucker but you can't argue to a solution mm -hmm. it's not me versus you it's us yeah. versus the problem yeah but that's funny me and my brother was just talking about that shit like it's okay to disagree yes and just and still be cool though yeah at this, at <laughs> like, this point if you say you don't want to argue it's a red flag yeah. because we're gonna get into an argument yeah, yeah, but yeah. also if you can't argue and not hate me in the yeah. end like that's a problem and that's how you know when you got a real one as, as a person you're in a relationship with y'all can argue and still be cool afterwards yeah and not want to kill each other or fucking break you might want to kill them but might <laughs> but you don't yeah. you, i love you so much i'm for just sure. not gonna kill you for sure for sure yeah you and you need those those healthy relationships when it comes to friendship uh, family relationships with your your girl, your dude. Like, I can argue. I can tell you why I don't like. 
Yeah. Without you want to say, well, fuck this whole relationship is over. Exactly. Like I, <laughs> I remember being in a relationship and every time we argue, I was like, I should break up with this nigga. I'm like, that's that's not healthy. Like <laughs> I shouldn't want to break up every time we have a disagreement. For sure, like, for sure. and I had to learn how to navigate through mm. friendships, and like I'm still learning how to navigate through relationships. Yeah. While I'm by my damn self. Oh yeah, yeah. You got to though. You got to. So um, with you guys doing the podcast, and you said you always think about doing it separately before y'all came together do you think you would last as long if you did it by yourself um i probably mm -hmm. but it just wouldn't as it wouldn't have been as fun yeah for sure yeah yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. honestly like being able to have somebody to be like bro you see that shit yeah, yeah or yeah, like yeah. okay we gotta go to this event together yeah. like come on let's go yeah because i never understood and i and i command people who can have a podcast and they body fucking self just talking yeah, like I, I, <laughs> that shit's hard for like. I don't think nobody want to hear it, my shit. Like if I get to talking to my fucking self, yeah, like because motherfuckers get to talking, I'm like, damn, he by himself. Like, I'm about to start a scenario in yeah. this bitch. Like I'm doing different voices. Like nobody for wants real. To hear hell that. yeah, hell yeah. So um, in 2019, y'all did y'all first live show. Yes. How was that like? How was that? Was that nervous? Because you talking around people in the crowd, and they, you know what I'm saying? You hoping that re the reactions come back as like some laughter or niggas just looking at you. How was that? Uh, first of all, it was amazing. I, we were both so grateful for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, but both of us are used to like being in front of people. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I grew up dancing. So mm -hmm. um, I always so. dance in front of a large crowds and like, you know, school yeah. assemblies. And for one sure. time we performed at the Fox Theater. Mm -hmm. Um, she grew up uh, she went to DSA mm -hmm. so she was in choir so she like is used mm -hmm. to also used performing to, yeah, yeah. yeah and she danced too growing up so okay. uh, we both were uh, com really comfortable yeah. and also um I don't doubt I'm a funny motherfucker, so if you don't, <laughs> if you don't laugh, laugh then, yeah, you don't laugh. You're just a corny ass motherfucker. <laughs> I mean, I'm a corny ass motherfucker, so yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. might not like the shit, it's cool. Yeah, for sure. I'll Hell catch yeah. you on the next one. Hell yeah, so is that something you want to, like, that's something that you want to do more of, like live shows? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, um, like I said, I like being in front of people. It's okay. a good vibe. Yeah. Uh, as, I feel like as long as... The lineup cool. I'm mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. oh, for sure. And the lineup was great that day. That yeah. was like a really good one. Yeah, yeah. Now that wasn't the first time y'all met the twins, was it? No, okay. no. We had um they had access to come on that show before, mm -hmm. so we had uh like recorded with them. In the yeah, cause I heard the last time you was on there, you it was your uh, you, you was a third time. Uh, kind of yeah, kind of I was like, time. damn. <laughs> <laughs> so you family now, nice. <laughs> right? No, they they real good people. No, for sure, cause I they had me on the show and stuff. They was like, you know, you had people come on the show like, man, I want you on my show. And niggas would be talking and shit, but they really had me on the show. We, it was a good time. Like, yeah, they they always support. They and, are definitely our podcast. And they some family. deep brothers. Like you talk to them about anything, they be, they could tap into it. Like yeah, they was like trying to like <laughs> hook me up with some whiskey and shit. I'm like yeah. hell yeah. It was like oh, yeah, some yeah, black yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, yes. He talking about uh, uh, Uncle Nearest. Yeah, and Duke and Dane. Uh, shout out to my dog uh, Deshaun Cooper. Uh, Diddy and stuff. Matter of fact, that's Stacks homeboy. He got, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we had the Duke and Dane right there behind uh, uh, Sugar Goodnight. You know what I'm <laughs> That good Duke and shit. It's good, though, man. Like, But you got to make sure you have a real code. Real code. But the Uncle Nearest is better to me. Um, I, I mean, a majority of like my bourbon whiskeys and cognacs, mm -hmm. I do prefer chill. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, scotch, I'll take it straight. Like, okay. you can just give it to me neat. Yeah, for sure. Now, uh, now you drink... you Because you usually don't meet uh, a young woman who... Who get to bourbon and stuff like that and whiskeys and shit. They just straight, you know what I'm saying, hood rat drinks and shit for the yeah. most part. No, I, I <laughs> like, definitely... What led uh, you... Uh, I had to be a family thing that led you to drinking like stuff like that. I don't really know. Like, my daddy drink Jose and, and oh, shit, yeah. like, yeah, 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 yeah. but I just... I don't know. Like I like Tennessee, and I was like, "This is this has got to be the worst shit. Like it got to be something better than this." <laughs> and um, then I started like <laughs> drinking Duce, and now like when I go places, I usually just try to uh, yeah. try different whiskeys, bourbon, bourbons, and cognac. And I always order old fashioned majority of the places that I go. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I've always been like that. Like I went to Beer Fest by myself a few years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I love beer. Yeah. That's just always been me. I oh, for sure. I don't know where I got that shit from. Yeah, see, I ain't drink. I ain't drink a beer for the first time until like real talk. So I was about twenty nine, thirty. First time I had beer. Oh no, I had them whole ass platinums with y'all. Them must get you drunk though. Them Bud. Yeah, they do. They yeah, do the job. Yeah, they get you drunk as hell. Drunk as fuck. Fucking so, Bud Light. <laughs> so, huh? Back to the podcast. Like with y'all too. Is it hard getting eyes and ears on y'all show? 
Like, was that hard? Was that, was that something that was kind of discouraging if you, like, maybe don't get the numbers that you want as far as, like, listeners and shit like that? Uh, at first, we paid attention to the numbers, but then we just stopped looking at the shit. Like, yeah. we had a conversation one time. We was basically, like, the looking at the shit don't change them. Yeah. Like, it just make you worry about them. Like, so let's mm. just do what we came here to do, which is, like, record. And, and also, when you, like, get into numbers and shit, it suck the fun out of stuff. Yeah, for sure, yeah. And you, so... You, that's what you worry about. Instead, you had a dope-ass interview... And motherfuckers will listen to it eventually. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like, and if y'all don't, like, you just missed out on some good shit. Yeah, for Like, sure. we have definitely recorded sometimes and, like, took the headphones off. Like, that was a good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Hold yeah. on, you, when do you know it's a bad one? Like, damn, that was a bad one. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I guess, we. I don't know if I ever, we ever, I ever took the headphones off. Yeah. I was like, I, yeah, I went home like right home like damn, this wasting my motherfucking day. <laughs> maybe I like maybe I said some stupid shit like damn, that one shit I said was crazy though. But, uh, hey, have you ever ever had to edit some out? Like, no, this can't go out. No, we do not edit. Okay, so if it's out, it's out. Fuck it. Yes, you live with the consequences. Um, we slap the music on the front, mm -hmm. and like that's it. Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, I, I feel like I stand strong on my word. I yeah. said that shit. I meant it. Yeah, for sure. Now, one thing I can say, uh, a five, just a fifth show. Out of eight five, I probably had about, probably about five. That I went home like, damn, I wish I never did that show. <laughs> like, I wish, I wish I never interviewed that person because you got somebody who don't want to talk, don't want to answer questions, or just feel too like just no type of personality. Like those type of people, you'd be like, man, fuck. I wish I never had them on the show. Yeah, I think we well the guests that we've had on our show have been really good. Like they have wanted to come, like reach out to us, like, hey, yeah. can we come on the show? Or yeah. like been our actual friends, people we and that, know. That's what I was gonna say. Do you guys pick? Guess as far as people that you know, or like just it, it'd be a total part stranger that you never met before. Um, people, it's usually people that we know, so mm -hmm. maybe people that we've met out like while we've been at events, or people that we just know, um, just from like school or growing up, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, but because we don't really have like guests yeah, like yeah, that, because sure, no, mostly just y'all two. Yeah, just yeah. talking shit yeah, to talk two shit. of us. Yeah, but it's a little easy when you got somebody like me. I gotta have a guest. Yeah. No guess, no show. Fuck it. <laughs> or me and him will talk about some random ass shit, and then we just go off of that. Yeah, that is. It's one of the things that I, I do love about our show is like it's just the two of us like kicking mm. and talking shit. Yeah. Like even when we like we have our segments and shit. Like we love the segments. Like sure. um, I, we the segment is called Three AM Jokes, but yeah. it's always like jokes Kayla can't stand because she yeah. hate when I do them bitches because I do that shit in real <laughs> life. Like our yeah. segments came from like the shit that we was doing in real life. For sure, for sure. Now, first time I met you and your co-host, I don't know if y'all remember. I was on, I was down here with y'all on a good wake and bake show. <laughs> so, how did you meet these guys or this guy? Like, how how fuck you? This that happened. Oh, uh, we met in North Carolina, right? Oh shit, y'all down there? Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's when we met the twins and shit down there. Yeah. Yeah. So we knew the twins before we um had went, went down, down there. there yeah. yeah. But they um like had reached out to us about the the event, and mm -hmm. we was like, hell yeah, we want to do it. We'll come down, mm -hmm. and we like you know went down for the weekend. And then y'all won the award, and Kayla was like, "They from Detroit." I was like, "What?" Hell yeah. <laughs> like, like, what excuse up, me? <laughs> For sure, hell yeah. This motherfucker was hype as hell. He's on live and shit, sweating and shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, we won, dog. Okay, no, it still, was still didn't get the. I know the award. <laughs> it was a little warm in there. It yeah. was. <laughs> That's funny as hell. So, uh, I have noticed that y'all haven't been recording as of late. Mm -hmm. What's uh, what's up with that? And when y'all plan on coming back? Um, we coming back as soon as we possibly can. Okay. But um, we want to kind of put a little elbow grease into it mm -hmm. before we get it back to y'all, cause like life happens. For sure. Um, so that and with the all of the COVID shit, it kind of yeah, kept yeah. us from uh, recording a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, so with that, we was like, okay, well, when we come back, we kind of want to make sure we do some shit right. For sure, for sure. Because when we started, we was like, nigga, get in front of the mic. Yeah, like yeah. that's it. And yeah, and yeah. we when we started, we didn't even have our logo. Mm -hmm. You know, we got that as we that's went. A dope like logo, everything uh, came. By the way, too. I'm, oh, thank you. Yeah, I dope. really appreciate that. We love our logo. Yeah, uh, yeah. Audi Bowes, Bowes Studio, mm -hmm. um, great, great great people anything y'all anything y'all want to accomplish as far as like coming back anything any goals as far as like set for the podcast um i think sponsorship is just like sure, make the, some money yeah the, the main thing right now mm -hmm. um because like i said we love doing it mm -hmm. so just maybe if we could like get a little something out of it in for return sure, for <laughs> sure. now you got to your little spitely uh you know what I'm saying film director and stuff <laughs> So uh, what made you get to you? You got a short film coming up called uh, Last Call. Yes. Uh, what made you get into this? Uh, you you already tapped in that you you know saying been a writer, but what made you want to see it on the screen? Um, 
So, like I said, I after I lost, because uh, I tried to, like, clean my computer, and I lost everything on there, and I backed it up, and I didn't Still back lost. it up, I yeah. guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I was like, okay, I want to kind of, like, rise to the challenge of creating stories, mm. and... I only had two pieces of stories left. So we had did a writer's room right before COVID had started um, with our production company, Gold Television. Okay. And um, my partner, Paige, she gave us like a writing challenge. Okay. And she was like, okay, for the next eight minutes, write. Okay. Create a story from what's in front of you. Mm -hmm. And I had a coffee cup and I created the story from there and I switched it to a bar. Mm, okay, for sure, <laughs> for sure. Hell yeah. <laughs> And, and and that's and that's how the whole concept came. Yeah. So uh, talk about like what what was the last what's last call about? Like uh, I know, but the people need to know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, last call is a conversation between two individuals mm -hmm. who, it's the aftermath of their situationship. Okay. Okay. So it's like it's like a little closure, a little. Yes, yeah. very much so. Like when you go looking for closure, this mm -hmm. is what you find. Okay. Okay. Now, can you have closure in like? A situationship in a real relationship have you ever had like a close a closing conversation like um, this is it this is why is it like a real conversation about like how you fucked up or <laughs> you know because i had that conversation it was kind of crazy i i've had it in like like friendships have mm. i had it in a relationship yeah uh i don't know because i i'm them niggas is black so <laughs> <laughs> Man. And the, the ones that's not don't want to talk to me. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, I, I think closure. I don't believe in looking for closure. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that it'll come to you when yeah. you need it because, like in life, you just gotta like work on your shit. Yeah, because most relationships, when you like kind of like getting out that shit, it just it's just over. Yeah, or you like you're just trying to clear that yeah. shit out, or go from a relationship to like, all right, we gonna still say friends. Then you talk to them once a week, once a month, once every year. Then you be like, damn, what happened to them? Yeah, <laughs> that's, how, that's how it really this is. Shit slow. But that's I feel like when shit don't end well, mm -hmm. you and that's when you really be like trying to hold on to shit. Like you yeah. kind of want to dip your toe back in the water, and that's what this is. Like, uh, mm, I just I don't think you should go looking for it. Yeah, I think the reason why I had closure because it was with my son, and mom. So it was like our last sentiments and shit. <laughs> we, we, you know, basically saying how we was gonna do it and stuff like that. As far as like us having kid, a kid, mm -hmm. and junk, and just like you know how it was gonna be. But I, I hated, I hated her for what she did at the time. You know what I'm saying? But it was like we just got that shit on the, put it on the table, and then we like we gonna still be good parents and shit. Yeah, and like you said at the time, like I'm sure she probably a different person now, yeah. and so are you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but then sometimes don't don't that make you a little mad? Like damn, motherfucker, you wasn't this good person when you was with me. You became a good person afterwards. Fuck you. Uh, I just think about it. I, <laughs> I, like I said before, I'm one of them people, so I just think about it as like whatever it, whatever it is I was giving you yeah. wasn't feeding what you whatever you needed. For like sure, that person, sure. they able to feed you the way that you need to yeah. be like a, a more mature yeah. person. Like they nurtured something in you yeah. that I didn't. Yeah. Get yeah, 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 and then like, I got to look back on our relationship. Like, thank you, God, <laughs> but, but even though that's my son, and mom, but thank you, Jesus. Like, we but, we we wasn't a good fit. It's like I put in like um, I don't know if you're a sports head, but like Shaq and Kobe, mm -hmm. they won some rings. They was a terrible fit, but then when they lost, they lost. Like it was a wrap, and that's how I look at us. We was a good fit. Got a good championship. My son was a championship. <laughs> but then after a while, you like, hold on, nigga. You ain't doing... This is a bad team. Like, let me go ahead and trade your ass. Yeah. Like, you just you just need... Some people just a better <laughs> fit. Like, it didn't make them... It didn't make either of them bad players. For sure. For sure. Or bad teammates for one another. Fit. Right. Yeah. Now, who are the, the leading roles? Who are... Uh, you got, you got uh, of course, a guy and a, and a, and a female. Who are the, your lead roles? And, like, did you ever think about playing the lead role at first? Or you just wanted to stay strictly writing the shit? Um, I'm strictly a writer. I'm not an actor. I <laughs> yeah. can I always say, like, I, I can only act like a real nigga. That's it. Like, yeah. I, I can write some shit, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, no, I never thought about being in it myself. Um, mm -hmm. Even though, like, the I would say, like, one of the main inspirations, like, for me writing mm -hmm. and, like, wanted to bring it to life mm -hmm. um, is the chick from Chewing Gum. Okay. Uh, I May Destroy You. Her name is, like, Michaela. I always, like, botch up her last name. Mm -hmm. But she, um, a writer from the UK, okay. and, like, she wrote, directed, and starred in her shit. Okay. And I was like... Yeah. She could do it and the shit's good. I'm yeah, like, I sure. could do it. Like, you yeah. know, it's that's why representation always matters. Like as even as an adult, I'm like, mm, I can do it. Mm -hmm. But um no, I never thought about 
starring in it at all. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So it's Tyler and Nia are the lead oh, so names. That's his yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Tyler yeah, and Nia. Yeah, yeah, but now what made you pick them, them two? Like, did they come audition or like you had friendship oh. with both of them? Oh no, that's not that's not Kyra. Uh, it's Chiron. Okay, okay. Tyler is the is they, is they name in the, in, the, in the movie. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. So, um, my the actors that came out are Phoebe mm-hmm. and Chiron. Okay. Stax. Um, they came out to audition. Okay. Uh, we had a casting call. Uh, and like a couple months ago, back in July, mm-hmm. and um, we had like a nice little turnout. Yeah. Um, a nice amount of dudes came out, which I was like very happy about because you know sometimes it's hard to get men to come out. For sure. Um. But the people that auditioned were great. Mm-hmm. Um, Ky- Kyron just brought something like a little different to the role that yeah. I needed. Yeah. And Phoebe also, like, Phoebe was just really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, I wonder where I would have got that role if I would have tried it <laughs> I mean, we going to have been, casting calls coming up. You know, you could try you know, again. I've been, I've been trying my hardest to get on people movie at stud number two. That's like I, I want make my I want make my debut a stud number two a thug at the bus stop you know just a thug you know what I'm saying at the bus stop. <laughs> we were talking about I forgot the last dude we had named Monte he was talking about how he been in movies and stuff he's like dog you write your movie have us being here do a podcast and then me and motherfucking Q just get murked in this motherfucker like niggas come down <laughs> try, try I was like we both have been dead <laughs> let me put, let me put that one in my archive <laughs> <laughs> like Q and Shy get murked in the movie like <laughs> but no uh, um. So uh, you said they 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 stood out or whatever and that's you know saying that's why you picked them or whatever. Yes. So uh, as far as like you know saying auditions for other roles in the movie, is it gonna be speaking roles or is it just gonna be like the dude standing right there holding a cup? Like, uh, like, no, it's only them two. Okay. Um and like the it's two scenes. One scene she's by herself and then the next scene is them together. Okay. And it's pretty much just them having this conversation at the table. Yeah. And and this all stems from a situation ship. Yes. So like, how do you end? That like oh we was because a situation is basically niggas fucking without a uh, t- uh, um uh, um a title right so like how do you really end that like I I don't like, know because <laughs> the last one I was in um, <laughs> he got married so yeah. that's how that had ended and yeah. then the one before that like we like broke up mm. and we wasn't together yeah. so there was that yeah. so I don't know because my situation just was like. I got a, I got a girl. She got a dude, and mm-hmm. when we ain't with them, we 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 doing what we do. Is that still a situation? But it's like a cheating way. I was about to say <laughs> at that point, like you got a mistress. Yeah, because like, <laughs> I mean, at the time, I thought you know I was young. That's an affair. I was a, I was a young dude and jug. I'm like this is probably the best thing because she she not gonna want no commitment because she got a dude, and I don't want no commitment because I got a, you know saying chick. So we do our thing, and that's it. Yeah, I mean that all. <laughs> Oh, I don't. That's really dicey. Like yeah, it, it's both of y'all try. That's what I'm saying. Like both of y'all trying to get hurt. Yeah. Shout out to Jimmy Jazz. <laughs> that's what. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what. I'm, I'm. I'm grown. And my wife, you watching this? I'm not that way. You know that. Come on now. I got. I leave my phone on the fucking couch. Like when I take it a shower. Delivered. Because usually, yeah. Usually when you when you fucking up, you don't leave your phone on the couch while you take a shower. Yeah, I'm, I'm butt naked with them on your hip, like how that shit on your hip. Yeah, <laughs> I'm one of those people. I never been concerned about my phone. Like yeah. the the one of the situation ships I was in. Like I used to get cussed out about like not locking my phone. Yeah. Like you could lose it, and then somebody so just open. I'm like, well, it. if I lost it, it's yeah. already it fucking is. gone. It's like, what it is. now, can a situation ship turn to a relationship? Uh, you like, I think it definitely can. I've yeah. seen it. Cause you're like, hold on. I'm, Maybe she's the one. Maybe I'm tripping. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen it happen. Um, <laughs> not for me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it definitely can because yeah. I I think sometimes you just spending a lot of time with a person for sure, and then you're like, whoa, wait a minute, like, yeah. man, I don't want this to end, yeah. and then you want to take it to the next level. And sometimes you spending a lot of time with a person, you're like, this shit about the end. Because so. I always looked at that shit as like just niggas being scared to commit. Yeah, you. Niggas I, be t- Nig- niggas be scared to get hurt. Niggas could say, can claim that hard shit all you want to, but niggas be scared to get hurt. So you're like, yeah, ain't my chick. I just, you know, we just fuck. You know what I'm saying? I agree. <laughs> I describe it as like you take all the good shit from a relationship, which is like the sex and the yeah. hanging out and like y'all laughing, y'all joking, For all sure. the extra shit. But like you take all the hard stuff out, which is the work. Yeah. Like relationships are hard fucking work. Yeah, for sure. And a situation ship is just like the fun part. But yeah. sooner or later, feelings, yeah. the hard shit catch up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, can you become jealous in that? 
Oh, for have sure. you become? How, would you jealous? No, I don't give a fuck. Oh, so you just still life, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I, like I, it, whatever we establish it to be, like I'm gonna take it as that. So mm-hmm. if I know that this ain't that, like I'm not gonna. And I, if I do catch myself catching feelings, which I have, yeah. I usually just like try to back away because like I'm gonna get my feelings hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I don't think, like, for the most part, I, I think it's a bad idea. Yeah, like, because for no, the most part, not recommend. somebody gonna catch feelings. Yes, you know what I'm saying. You gonna throw that pussy back too hard, and she go, "Oh shit, cause damn, I need this in my life." <laughs> or like, or you might throw that motherfucking hammer on her and shit. She, you know, say you might get hypnotized. Like it just depends. Like sometimes that could be a bad thing. Like yeah, I've seen like I've seen when like niggas change and I'm like why are you acting like yeah. that like we was cool yeah, like you did, that, you... you did that one move it was, <laughs> it was over and shit <laughs> I didn't see him twist like that before no but I'm like you don't even want to be with me you just want to act weird yeah. like yeah 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 that shit crazy man so in this day and age do you believe in like a successful relationship love like you know what I'm saying Cause you say you still trying to figure things out like can, can you really put trust in it cause right nowadays it's hard to trust a motherfucker it is. Um, Especially in Detroit. I mean, I know that's everywhere, but shit, this is a little ass city. Like, everybody know everybody. Everybody ain't fucked everybody. So, like, is it hard to be like, you know what? I'm going a, I'm to a lock in with this dude without having that, that, that thought, like, damn, maybe I might get hurt. Um, it is, I mean, you're you going to think about that regardless. Even if you do trust them, like, mm-hmm. you're still going to think, like, damn, this could end badly. Because, I mean, that's just the reality of shit. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely believe in it. Like, I have friends that are in relationships like Mm -hmm. one of my male friends he got married a couple weeks ago like it was a beautiful wedding his wife is amazing like i love like going to their house when they have shit Mm -hmm. like i like i said um he my homeboy so when i met him all he talked about was like how much he loved his wife i remember one time he was like writing baby names in the back of his notebook and shit like he you know he's committed to his life Mm -hmm. and another friend of mine like he uh, recently had a baby shower like sure. he full blown plans to marry her like yeah. it's just trying to get in the right position like so I, I've seen relationships and like I said my auntie and my uncle like they've been yeah. married forever yeah. um, so I've seen successful relationships sure. and I believe it could happen yeah. I believe that shit don't happen for everybody yeah, for sure. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> now, one thing I always hated is when niggas be in relationships and they be like dog let's be friends I'm not I can't be a friend no, I don't want to be a fucking like, nigga, friend we, we just got friends and niggas smash it every day like we was in a relationship that love shit now I'm your friend you ask me about some other nigga that you mess with now, like yeah, that shit. We can't weird. be homies no more, nigga. Once we once we was fucking, we was together. Like nigga, fuck, I ain't no homie. I forfeit that. <laughs> no, I'm good. I got friends. Yeah, like nigga, I'm good. And my wife can't. What about I can't have no friend opposite sex, like for real. That's to me. That's weird. No, because like if a new if we together, a new nigga Craig want to come around. Like oh, it's my friend. Like nigga, no, duh. But that's like I'm your friend. <laughs> your brother's your friend and your cousin. <laughs> but that's what. <laughs> That's what happened with me and my homeboy. Like, me and him became friends. Him and his uh, wife have been together for eight years. Me and him became friends, like, three, four years ago. Sure. Um, So, you know, they were already yeah. in the thick of it. And I'm sure he, she, like, this your homegirl. Yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, she really opened her arms to me. And she was really nice. And, yeah. I, like I said, they're a beautiful couple. This is me, then. Maybe. I don't know, man. <laughs> maybe y'all could y'all be cool at the, at the job. Like, so I don't know. Because it's just, I don't know. And that's what it went from. Like, we yeah. was cool at the job. And then he was like, oh, you want to come to the house? We yeah. having something. And, like, now they always invite me to their shit. I went to her birthday party. Yeah, that's some like, girl. I got to grow on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's all about tra- like when you have actual platonic friendship. Yeah, for sure. Like it, you know that it means a lot. Like yeah. to me, my male platonic friendships are like very important. But can you have friend? Can you have friendship without ever having the the, the uh, sex come across your your mind? I mean, like for, for most time dudes, you know, we 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 ain't too smart in the head when it comes to shit like that. Like for the most part, dudes look at a woman. I mean, of course, it has been women that's like. That's been like, damn, she's super cool. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But for the most part, and you know what I'm saying, niggas be the first thing they think about with a woman is like, damn, I wonder how that is. Or you <laughs> could you could just think your friend like fine. Yeah. You could like can, if, but can, can you have can you think your friend fine now make a move? Yeah. Like what you think? can't be around a fine motherfucker and not want to fuck. Like that's crazy. You can't I mean control. I can't I can I can control it now. Back then, <laughs> yeah, I'm 35, but 
<laughs> 25 shit. But see, that's the thing. Like, we always, be, we're always told, like, me and are like these animals. Like, yeah. you're not an animal, you're a human, and you yeah, can control sure. that yeah. shit. No, like, yeah, sure. you could be around you somebody control. that you are attracted to or somebody that you think is attractive and, like, not want to fuck them. Like, my male friends give me compliments. Like, damn, you look fine today. Like, yeah. and I know full of blown, this nigga's not trying to fuck yeah, me. For like, sure, for sure, for or sure. you learn how to compliment. Like, one of my friends gave me a compliment. He was like, nigga, your purse look fire as yeah, hell. Like, yeah, yeah, thank yeah. you. Well, shit, thank God me and my wife got, we, our friends is like, it's a circle. Like, my. <laughs> this nigga said, we trying to keep it in the family. Yeah, like, I don't know what the fuck y'all talking yeah, about. Like, like her, her, her cousin just, you know what I'm saying? You know, her her cousin, her homegirl kind of, you know what I'm saying, linked up and stuff. So, shit, we friends. Like, now I don't mind, like, if, if Lance, like, that's her, you know what I'm saying? That's her cousin through marriage, but they text, that's cool. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's family. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So that I like that. I like when we friends with couples, cause they, <laughs> cause we can all crack jokes together and stuff, man. Maybe it's just me being. Stupid. I think you. I think when you are married, it's <laughs> it's important to have like a, a, at least one or two single friends. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Single friends. Yeah. Oh, now that's, we was talking about red flags and um, music mm-hmm. can be red flags in your mate friends. Like yeah, like like I don't, I'm I wouldn't want my girl hanging with a whole bunch of hood rats, aing on every video. Hey hey, I'm good. Well, that depends on where we at because if we out, you know, you I'm, I'm a. Hey, oh like. shit. <laughs> <laughs> I hate the A. <laughs> if we having a good time, like you know, if we. Oh, I, I would say I would say a rest in peace A. I might give like, an A. What, 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 like, how do it feel like you know an A about to come out? Like what? <laughs> Got me a certain song or just a know, certain amount of drinks? It's like, like <laughs> it's like it's like word vomit. Like it just spill out. You don't know. You don't even know what's coming. It's like it just, the track <laughs> hit, the drink <laughs> hit. Like my friend shaking her ass like she's never shaken it before. Like hey, oh, hit that bit. Like. <laughs> See, like it, it just comes. Okay, okay, okay. Comes. Now you give us a definition why I just came. Because <laughs> when I see, I, I know people. When they, hey, I be just thinking like, God, damn. you're not having a good enough time. Yeah. If well, you, I, it, I don't want no man to a. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I guess niggas do be a No, know, if I see hey, I'm questioning. If I see this nigga on Instagram get drunk, he's like, hey, I'm like, God. Why? I'm going to call him like, dog. Hey, stop that shit, dog. <laughs> I mean, Jeezy did it. That's I'm about to say yeah, but, hey. yeah. <laughs> you gotta hit him with the cool one. one. He said one time. It was, it was a good. Song. It, was, yeah, it was an ad lib. No, <laughs> I'm not ad dog. I know what you talking about. You hey, when they smack the ass, hey, hey, like, no, I can't do it. Yeah, we hyping. She on yeah. the couch, like, yeah. stand on that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, too hype. Now you say you had the uh, the crowdfunding uh, was over September first. Yes. Uh, so, um, like, uh, did you did you guys reach our goal, or is it still something that need to be achieved? We didn't reach our goal, mm-hmm. but we did receive some funds, so mm-hmm. we are very happy about that. Uh, so, if anybody wants to donate, please let me know. We're yeah. still taking donations. And again, like with, with the podcast, like it's just hard when you like initially doing something. Like if it's uh, writing a book, doing music, a movie, a podcast, like it's just hard, like doing that groundwork and just getting people to come out and support. And you know what I'm saying, and, and, and dig what you're doing, like, like, is, like, with this, have it have it been something that's kind of like tough, like getting the, the funding and getting people to come support and really want to go ahead and you know what I'm saying be behind this. Yeah, yes and no. Like the people <coughs> who know me and like are around me, they have definitely been supportive and mm-hmm. like trying to help and you know reposting and posting and everything. Um, but as far as other people, for sure, and, and it's I feel like it's always like that. Um, like you said, the foundation work is just the, mm. the hardest part to do. Um, and that's what this is, like mm. me establishing myself as a screenplay writer and a mm. director. Mm. Um, so that's going to be like the hardest part. And this this is just the beginning of the hard part because sure. um, it's not it's not the last project. So yeah. it's always going to be problems. It's always going to be issues um, getting people to support. Yeah. And like I say, this, this ain't the last project. It's the first one. It's the You know what I'm saying? This is what you got to put out there as far as like, hey, I did this. What are you looking to is to accomplish? You know, saying from this from this film. And I know you said it's a short film. I heard you on the twins, like eleven minute. Film. Yeah, yeah. So what are you looking to like accomplish and, and hoping that people see out of this from you as a writer and from you know saying these two actors? Uh, I guess the main thing I just want people to relate to it. Mm-hmm. I guess. Um, like I always want to write stuff that people can kind of relate to, relate to or see themselves in, mm-hmm. but also something that just kind of makes them think. Mm-hmm. 
um whether it's about their own situation or just somebody that they know or just taking a different perspective on something i think sure. that's the main thing that i want for sure now with this last thing are you a forgiving person when it comes to like relationships friendships can you forgive or it just depends on what they did it takes me a minute mm -hmm. it takes me a minute i've that's the one thing i've have been learning in life <laughs> i said earlier like yeah. to let go yeah um so and forgiving is like a part of letting go so it, sure. it takes me <laughs> yeah. a minute it, yeah. it also depends on what you did um because mm -hmm. like if you make me feel a certain way that's mm -hmm. one thing i never forget is how people make me feel for sure for um sure. so especially if you make me feel a type of way yeah so i i do forgive mm -hmm. i just need time um, can you forget somebody for cheating if you're in a relationship? Um, yeah, I probably won't fuck with you no yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. Like, so I, ain't, ain't no forgive like we can get back together. Oh no, it's just like all right, nigga. Like because uh, it's like you made a decision. Mm -hmm. It's a decision after decision after deci after sure. decision. So Hell, yeah, go yeah. ahead and make another one. <laughs> no, this is the last thing I heard this as far as relationship. I'm done. I heard this on um on another podcast. I listened to it. It was pretty funny. Is this something you you in a relationship already? Is it something that he could tell you from his past that make you be like, I'm, I'm not. All right, we can't continue on. Like y'all might got too drunk. Like oh, uh, uh, insecure. Remember when oh, he said he sucked the nigga dick and shit. On oh, insecure, and she was like, she couldn't get over it. Yeah. So she left that nigga. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, no. Angry over there, like what the fuck? Like is it something that something that could be brought like with me if my wife right now say. Like yeah, I got I got uh stoles ran on me. Like I got a train ran on me by two dudes. I don't think I can forget I don't think I can forget that. I can't I don't give a fuck what y'all say. I can't you, I'm weak. About, you said your wife, bro? Yeah. Alright, alright, I ain't gonna say wife because I gotta get over that shit. If she my girlfriend and she tell me that she a nigga two niggas and ran through her, nah, I can't fuck with you. I can't dog. What that I don't give a fuck. I'll be weak. Though. I'm, I don't know. I just this tell me a lot. It tell me a lot. That's you are like you already with her. You already love the bitch. You with her. Like y'all together. Yep. Like I'll and so now that it's something in her past they don't change who she is as a person. Like, I don't like, give a fuck about of course you 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 and fuck and stuff, but when you was yeah, I can't do it. I'm sorry, dog. Call me a whole ass dog, nigga. Dog we sucking dick. Yeah, that's oh yeah, yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> I mean, people experience sexuality <laughs> is fluid. That's terrible. But yeah, I just I just can't be. Yeah. Uh, I'm a firm believer that sexuality is fluid. Mm -hmm. Um, if you, like I just feel like you really didn't like the motherfucker yeah. anyway. Yeah. Like you was looking for a way out. You just found it. Yeah. So, so other than a nigga sucking some other, like, is there anything that a nigga tell you, like, oh, I can't continue with the relationship, even though y'all in the relationship already? I mean, outside of being, you know, like a child molester, mm. crazy shit like that, like, it's not a lot of yeah. stuff. Like, like I said, I, I need time, but I, yeah. I am a forgiving person. And yeah. like I said, if I'm with you, I'm with you. Like, yeah. it's not a light decision that I made. Like, sure. and also, like, I'm not perfect. I'm flawed up as yeah. fuck. So if I can't, I can't want something that i'm not willing to give so i can't want understanding and somebody to be patient with me mm -hmm. if i'm not willing to give patience and understanding okay okay now you say you wrote two films this is one of them that you still had um how quick are you gonna jump into the next one after you after you release this one um you're gonna take your time or you gonna let this marinate a little bit or you're gonna jump right into production or getting this next film ready uh, I have to see where I am with writing it because right mm. now, like right now, I'm writing it. Okay. Um. So as soon as I was done with that one, I just started the next one because I I, mm. I had a feeling when I was done with this one, like I kept. I promise it's probably like 55 drafts of this fucking script, mm. and 11 pages. Mm. But um, once I was done with it, like I knew because my producer was like, "Oh, well, we could add this now," and we, yeah. I'm like, "Bro, we're not adding yeah, anything." Yeah, like it, it's, it, I'm done. yeah. And once I was done, I was a, I was ready to move on to the next one. So yeah. um. I've been working on that one for the last couple of months as far as writing. So hopefully next year, well, not hopefully next year, sometime. Mm -hmm. Um, that's my timeline. It's okay. hopefully we'll have a not hopefully. Sorry, um, you, yeah, you will, I'm trying to will. change my language. Yeah, you will. You um, will. Once you do it, yeah. The timeline <laughs> yeah. is the casting call will be next spring. Okay, okay, okay. And like I said, if you need thugs, let me know. Oh no, I'm, I'm gonna need some for this one. Yes. All right, I'll be there. No, I I'll definitely <laughs> need some. Y'all heard it. Y'all heard it. I'm being thug. <laughs> but this one is more. Um, it's more way more roles. Like it's like mm. four lead roles, a bunch of supporting okay. roles. I need like annoying family member yeah. number two, like yeah, 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 shit yeah, yeah. like that. I'll so. be there too. Um, <laughs> as far as this film, when you are are you looking to have it available for people to see? Uh, October we want to do a premiere. Okay. And then we're gonna go from there. That's because I have to see about um festival season. Everybody keeps asking me about that. I'm like I don't. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So after we do the premiere in October, we'll go from there. Okay, okay. Now, uh, real quick, last thing: you a podcast host, writing films. What's some short term goals and long term goals with the both? 
Oh, in, with the boat. In, in a hole, like, you know, so what's some things you want to get accomplished now and, like, shit you see in the future, like, five years from now? Okay, the shit I want to get accomplished now is um, finishing, like, because the next one I decided is going to be episodes, so I want to finish the first two episodes um, and outline the first two seasons and get my casting call, like I said, in the spring. Okay. And, um get into pre-production before 2022 is done okay um my and i started <laughs> character development on a feature length okay so to get that one written before 2022 is over For sure. um long term would be like some type of network deal streaming deals yeah, yeah. Uh, distribution deals mm -hmm. um working with other producers and art um and different actors and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, working with, like, getting some type of mentorship with uh, a director. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And um, working on some seminars. Like, get, just getting as much, like, information as possible about oh, yeah. writing. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. Dope, dope, dope. Now, um, we always end it off on top three. I give okay. you a category. All right. You give me your top three. All right. Top three childhood crushes. Childhood crushes. Yeah. I gotta pick them now because they all whack as hell now. <laughs> yo, yo, I wanna hear it. That's, okay. That, I definitely wanna hear it now. <laughs> now okay. Lil Zane. Um, <laughs> um, childhood crushes. Okay, so my list is a little weird, so don't judge me. <laughs> it's all good. You can't be worse. My man, he picked Queen Latifah from seven. <laughs> wow. Um, definitely uh, Raheem and Juice. Okay. So fine, bro. Yeah, that nigga was in girlfriends too. When he got older, shit. yes, he was. I <laughs> yeah. look. Listen, I am a girlfriends fanatic. Don't get me started. And I thought that was Mayno brother for the longest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought that was a brother for the longest. Dog. Um, the nigga that shot Ricky. <laughs> dog. I'm sorry, he fine as hell. That nigga dead. Who is he? Yes. Damn. Damn. He, was, he was really tied up in like some gang shit. Lose another one. That nigga that was like Rondo. Was, it was fine. <laughs> I didn't say the nigga was y'all Ricky. Damn. Ricky! I told y'all my list was. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's your number three? Um. Ooh. <laughs> uh, and so food. Bird, her ex. Oh, uh, the light skin dude got yes. the job. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that nigga yes. dumped his ass out, dog. <laughs> yeah, that was, that's that's a uh, a list, boy. Yeah, like I, I, I see you probably say Raheem and shit, but uh, my man who shot uh fucking Ricky is hilarious. <laughs> like that man was fine. He rolled up with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right in the back of that motherfucker, red little escort looking. <laughs> and when they was at the party, you know, he was like trying to chill and shit. He like, nah, I'm gonna get that nigga. Yeah, yeah, because he was in another movie. Matter of fact, that nigga was in that movie. Um, he got beat down in that movie. Uh, what was that masterpiece movie? Uh, locked up. I don't think I saw that one. He was a crack at that motherfucker, though. That was a, <laughs> he was fucked up. He had the little break. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. He was in locked up. Uh, give me your top three TV shows. Um, girlfriends. <clears throat> I'm definitely a huge girlfriend. Classic, classic. Fan. Yeah. Um, the game is a spinoff of the girlfriends. Yeah, for it. sure. Yeah, I remember uh, that because it was that wasn't the uh, Durin. It was a different Durin in the spin. Yeah, it was a dark skin dude. Um, and she was, she was all girl cousin. Yeah, yep, I was about to yep, say, yep, and yep. Melanie was, came from like cash, bro. Yeah, because Melanie was related to Joan, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, she, like, they, Joan family That's picked her both as a shit. representative yeah. to, like, go talk Melanie out of being with this nigga. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, girlfriends. Um, is it, uh, Seinfeld. Okay. Uh, The Office. Okay. See, I like Steve Carell. That's like my dude. Like that, that nigga funny as hell. Yeah, that shit's never not funny. Like yeah. when he went back there, cause he was like Toby. Like he work here now. Yeah. Like nigga, what? <laughs> yes, man, that dude was hilarious. Though. Especially like four year old version. Uh, what was that uh, crazy, uh, crazy? Crazy stupid love. Yeah, that, that shit was, was funny. Like, nigga, all right, I'm jumping out the car. Like <laughs> nigga just jumped out that bitch. Now we was talking about girlfriends the other day, though. I'm gonna ask. Uh, I'm gonna ask you Q because I know you a girlfriend, a uh, uh, lover and shit. Who, who who was the who was the uh, the most attractive one to you? To Tony. me, yep, yep, Tony. Tony. Always, I, yeah, I, yeah. I think like, I don't like to put like do that like oh, who fine, but Tony. Tony. Mm -hmm. sure. lips. To me, it was like you it think, was the air, yeah. the yeah. personality, like yeah, the I way like that she approached the shit. I like Tony, man. Tony and shit. All right, give me your top three, uh, top three moments in life. Top three moments in life. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, going to Alvin Ailey. Okay. My uh, senior year of high school. Dope. Um, going back to New York mm -hmm. in 2016. 
Okay. I went back for like three months. Um, so that was amazing. Like, okay. man, I love not fucking driving. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, and going Jamaica at the be- going to Jamaica at the beginning of 2021, my mom and my sister. Oh shit, that's what's up. That's what's up. Give me your top three. Uh, top three foods. Ooh, top three foods. That's a good one because I love food. Um, let me see. What's one of my favorites? Go to my. Um, what my favorite breakfast is like salmon, eggs, grits with cheese and biscuits. Yeah, it sounds pretty good. Delicious. Um. <laughs> Damn, that shit sound good. <laughs> what I think about that shit right now. Uh, that syrup on the biscuit. Ooh, <laughs> listen, don't play me. Slop that motherfucker up like. <laughs> With the warm butter. Okay. Um, <laughs> top three foods. I guess that's all the foods right there because I love grits. <laughs> yeah, grits. <laughs> no, but you know what? It was a challenge to know how to make some grits. It is. Well, one time I went to uh, Aldi and yeah. I was like, do y'all have grits here? And they was like, oh, that's a little too far south for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh. It took me forever to learn how to make it. Like, grits and rice is like, I still can't master rice. No, I still fuck up rice. Yeah, all white rice. Like, I remember my wife was pregnant and she messed that rice and started crying because, you know, <laughs> I could she, see was her. she was like, ah, I start crying. I'm like, no, mm-hmm. we, we can go get the instant rice. Fuck it. <laughs> no, I, I can see that. I can see it. Like, one time, um, like, a Grubhub driver, like, snubbed me on my food. I cried. I was on my period. I Duh. fucking cried. Hell, <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell Maybe no. my goddamn food. But <laughs> Give me your top three alcoholic drinks. Oh, um, can I just pick whiskey, bourbon, and cognac? Yeah. Okay, bet. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Let me see. Well, last one. Last one. Top three artists. Um, Top three artists. Mm. Jay-Z, O Kanye. Mm. I mean, you, got, you gotta say that shit, yeah, man. Um, and and Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson, oh yeah. Honestly, like the the way this nigga like pushed the barriers on every fucking yeah, thing. Yeah, that's dope. That's dope. Now last thing, we got drum moment, high moment, or both. A story when you was fucked up off one or both of them. Okay. Um, one time I got real drunk on St. Patrick's Day and I like blacked out. Mm-hmm. I didn't eat enough before we got started. That's always that's always tragic. The last thing <laughs> I remember was like being doubled over on the car with one shoe on, thrown up, like yeah. head on the car, like thrown up. So when people say blackout, like you, like just forget everything in the middle. No, that's the last thing I remember. And then I woke up. Yeah, I was told that apparently, like we got a flat tire. Yeah. Like I was out here wilding. Yeah. My shirt was open because I had like a button down on. Like I was acting <laughs> crazy. And <laughs> hey, what were y'all drinking? Uh, they it was St. Patrick's Day, so it was like two dollar shots. Oh shit! So y'all just getting in? <laughs> Hell yeah! Because and it was like about the end, so we yeah. ordered like a bunch of them. And was like <laughs> just dance like because right. I, I bled out before, but I remember. Hey, hey yeah, it was a whole bunch of A in this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Duh, I, I bled out before, but it's like I remember like certain moments or whatever because we was drinking um four locos. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I and, can see you black and the mister having four locos. It was just cheap ass uh, vodka called um three sixty. So it sound like it was so it was so cheap that it wasn't even a glass bottle. It was plastic. Like any, I tell you, anything so, <laughs> that come in a plastic bottle will kill you. Yeah. So we drinking that shit with the four locos, and we at Vondi's, uh, all, you know, all by river and shit. And uh, yeah, so we in that motherfucker like I ain't drunk uh, one four local because it tastes like fucking uh, uh Arizona. So I killed the first can. Bam. We drink a couple of shots of the uh, 360. I kill like half the other one, pour the rest of it out. Another couple of shots. And like, dog, it's like once you go to, once we go to the club, to the front door, like get patted down, like, dog, shit ain't right. Like everything moving weird and shit. <laughs> and I'm so drunk, I'm not realizing, like, I'm with my son, mom at the time, and her friend is in there. And not her friend, but she know her. And my, that's my boy, we said, I remember picking her up, but I don't remember, like, bumping to the DJ. Like little shit mm-hmm. But he said He kept saying I kept bumping into him He had to pull me off And I kept saying I was sorry and shit So we, once we leave and shit We get to my house And he like Dog I'm like Dog I got throw up Let the window down So he let the window down But I still threw up in the car <laughs> And that's why I went inside the house Um, I got I took off I must have took off All my clothes Cause I woke up naked <laughs> I had a big ass bruise On my head And I had my mama phone Even though I had my own cell phone So I woke up on her couch Butt naked with her phone <laughs> So yeah, that was that was don't drink four locos, kids. <laughs> like, like so I blacked out, but I remember like certain moments. Like I remember dancing. I remember going into the car. I remember throwing up in the car. I remember saying I'm sorry, and then I remember waking up. 
Like, yeah. <laughs> like I can feel that. I kept telling Weezy, like, I'm sorry, dog. So when people be blacking out, like, I mean, damn, you just don't re- like niggas don't be remembering shit in the middle. Like, I just, there was nothing in the my, fucking middle. <laughs> just the intro, motherfucking results. That's it. Like, I woke up with like my coat on yeah. still, and I was I woke up like, what the fuck happened? Like, but, nigga, who house am I? Man, at? we saw so many titties from girls being drunk because like for some reason when girls get drunk, titties just come out. Yeah. <laughs> Because you spend most of your day like making like holding your shit like when you don't have a bra. Yeah. You spend most of your time like make sure your shit together. So then when you get drunk, it's just like, shit looks like, oh, free the nipple. Hey, <laughs> teens get to say, hey, like, and bitches come out too. And, then, and when I was young, I used to love girls fighting because teens always came out. Titties always come out when you think. I was young pervert like oh shit titties coming out. I don't get fucked with her nose. I don't get fucked her nose, bro. Nigga, I'm titty came out. Like, sad. sad. <laughs> All right, well, anywhere they can follow you as far as like the uh, the movie, your personal page, all that good stuff, the podcast. Go ahead and plug it in. Okay, for sure. Um, the movie is Last Call Dot Film. Okay. Um, my personal page is Robin underscore niggas. <laughs> with a Z or an S? <laughs> with an S. So okay. Robin with the Y, niggas with an S. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and call you back pie on all social media. Uh, that's all the social media all, is the same across the board. Mm. Um, and yeah, we we film on Sunday, which mm. is like a week from today. So okay, that's I'm like up. nervous a little bit. I very much so. Yeah. I couldn't even finish my movie last night because I kept putting it on pause because <laughs> the movie gave me so much anxiety. I got yeah. anxiety like it's yeah, not worth sure. it. <laughs> hell yeah, hell yeah. And you want to leave people off with any like you know saying good quotes, last sentiments, something they can remember. Don't drink and drive. <laughs> <laughs> Don't drink and motherfucking say titties. Like, what? <laughs> what some shit you want to leave them with? Um, what you resist will persist. Whatever you running from will catch up with you. Oh, Eventually, you end up chasing it. Oh shit, that's my this shit. I ain't gonna fuck your shit up like that. Usually, <laughs> I fuck people shit up and say something funny, but <laughs> I'm gonna end it off with that. Yeah, well, so I appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you for having me. I appreciate hey, it. I appreciate you being on time and all that good shit because niggas don't respect time nowadays. They don't. And that's good. It's all good. But no, <laughs> next time, y'all, shout out to everybody. Got the homie Robin niggas with a Y, niggas with S. I'll let y'all. <laughs> Oh yeah, you say wash your face and shit. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I always say.